Welcome to my new video about the React CLI you always wanted but didn't know about. So before we dive straight into the topic, let me explain you what I mean with React CLI. So the Re a React CLI, or a CLI in general for me, is a development tool that allows me to quickly start a new project, but then also that assists me throughout the development cycle. So it helps me run the application locally in a development environment, it helps me build, test, lint, and so on. So in this video, I would particularly focus on NX and how you can use NX as your main React CLI. NX already is widely adopted and very popular in Angular, React, Node, Next.js, and many other ecosystems. It has around 1.5 million downloads per week as of this recording. So NX comes out of the box with generators, which allow you to quickly scaffold a new project, scaffold components, new routes, and much more within an application. It, it comes with out-of-the-box configuration for tools like Jest for testing, Cypress, linting with ESLint, Prayer, and much more. And it obviously also comes with speed, so it makes sure your builds perform well and are fast, such that you don't lose time. So in this session, I would like to quickly show you how this works in practice and go a bit over these features and how this can actually look like when you use it as your main development tool. So let's check it out and jump straight in. So to get started, let's create a new NX workspace, which you can do by the npx create NX workspace binary. And we give the workspace a name. Now, usually that's the name of your organization. I'm just calling it my org, but you are really free whatever to choose whatever you want. So once we start this, we will be presented by a different options to set up that workspace. Now we could start with an empty one and incrementally add whatever we need, or we can also choose one that might best fit our intention. Now, in this case, since we're exploring an X for React development, we might want to go with the React preset. As an application name, let me choose Happy Normal, but like, again, you can just choose whatever is most suitable for you. And similarly for the style sheet format here. Now, in this case, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going with CSS. And as cloud is something that allows you to distribute your cache to the cloud and share it with your team members to speed up. And it's actually basically free. Like you get 500 hours per month of any cloud runtime. So definitely just opt in for that. So once the setup process finishes, you see here a couple of information is being printed out. First of all, how you could potentially install an X globally. Similarly, also links to tutorials and an X head course on using an X for scaling your React development. Finally, there's also some info on NX Cloud, how you can claim your workspace. Because right now, what we really did is just set up NX Cloud locally in our workspace. But if we click on this link, we could actually go ahead and set it up and claim that workspace and see some more information stats about how our caching is going. So for now, we really just want to open up that new NX workspace in Visual Studio Code. So if you open up our NX workspace in Visual Studio Code, this is what it looks like. So we have that apps folder where our React application is generated with already a couple of components. We have that happy novel end-to-end, -end, which we will be exploring in a bit, and a couple of other configuration files that are needed to run our workspace setup. Now, in order to launch our React application, simply we run an X, then we give it the action we want to do. So in this case, serve the application, and then we give it the application name, which is Happy Novel. What will happen here is it will compile it behind the scenes and then open it up in four, on the port 4200. So as a result, if we go to 4200, we see that welcome page with a couple of more infos. And this is one of the components that got generated in our React application. Now, similarly, we can also run MPX NX build if we want to build our application. And again, the name of our app. And so once we run this, it will run a build in production mode and it will place it in our dist folder. And now we can basically pick up these assets and deploy them to some production environment. Now, one important thing to notice here is NX is really all about speed as well. So what happens is if I run the same command again, let's say the build command, you will see it is immediate. And so here you can even see a notice that says like NX read the output from the cache instead of running one out of one tasks. Now what has happened here? NX has a so-called computation cache, which basically analyzes the commands that we execute, 
It includes its source files, information about environment and other config files, and then stores the result of such a, an operation in a local cache. Now, whenever we rerun the same command, giving the same conditions, it just restores the result from the cache rather than running the computation, therefore obviously speeding up and saving some computation power. Now, as we have done initially, we have also set up NX Cloud. So if you do that, it even remotely distributes that cache such that other team members can benefit from it as well. Now, another question you might be wondering is like, how do I actually know those targets? Like, how do I know that I need to run serve rather than start to run my application? Uh, well, if we go into our application here, we see that project JSON. And the project JSON is containing the information that is needed to run our application. And here you can also see the targets that can be invoked. So basically here we have the build, which we just invoked, we have the serve, and we have other targets, which we are going to explore in a bit. And similarly then, you can dive further in if you want to customize how the actual build would look like, or the serve, and so on. Now one of the big strengths of NX is its code generation part. We have already seen it in the initial setup when we use create NX workspace to generate the entire workspace and get started quickly already with an app and configured React application. Now this even helps throughout the development process and as NX has some more fine grade generators as well for, for instance, generating components, for generating routes and much more. So let's explore, for instance, the component generation part. So to generate a new component, what we can do is we can run NX generate or just g short then we give it the main package that serves for react development which is now a react and then we give it component and say the name of the component is hello world if we hit enter it gives us a couple of questions for instance should this component be exported in a project now since this is not really a library we can say false and then this will generate a new component within our application you can see we already get a spec file for it as well as like a module CSS file. And now we can pick up this component and just get going. Now you might be wondering, how do I actually know the name of these generators? How do I find them if I'm new to NX? There are different options actually. One is to go to our documentation site. So if you go to the docs here and search React component, you actually find the component generator and how to use it. However, if you don't know which which generators are available, you can actually use our newly set up structure here where we have the packages and then the name of the package. For instance, for React, you just remove it, the, the trading end here of the URL and you go to the packages React and you see all the possibilities that gives you. Here we also have the generators, for instance, and we will find, for instance, a generator for an application, for a library, as well as our component generator, which we just have seen. Another approach is to use npx nx list, which gives you basically a list of things that you can install and use. Now, here we have also community plugins as well as the native supported plugins that we have already installed. For instance, here we have our React plugin. Now, to know more about the specific plugin, we can use nx list at now our React in that case. And it will give us again a list of generators that we can use. And starting from that, we can then actually go and invoke them just as we have seen. By far the easiest way to explore such generators, however, is NX Console. NX Console is a Visual Studio Code plugin developed by the NX team to actually assist with your local NX workspace. And here you have different options of what you can explore. You have different commands listed down here. You see the projects that are currently available in the workspace. And you also have that generate command up here. And from there, you can actually then search throughout those generators. For instance, for React, we then have the list of generators to use. We can then choose, for instance, the component generator, which we have just seen. And this will present us with a visual UI with all the options that we can use for our component generator. So this is a real excellent way to explore what options there are. And so you can kind of fine tune the commands to your need. For instance, we can say, Hello React as the name of the component. We can choose the project where we want to generate it. We can actually then use different style formats. And below here you see also live output of what would happen if we run the command. Most importantly, you can also then just click this icon here 
and copy the command that is being produced to your clipboard so that you can then use it again and again afterwards directly from your local terminal window or you can just hit run to actually execute the command. Now this is not all. NX comes with a lot of different set of tools that are already pre-configured in our workspace and that assist us in the development, such as Jest for testing, Cypress, Lint, obviously TypeScript, Prayer, and much more. So let's have a look. So at the very root of our application here, of our workspace, we see that tsconfig base, which defines some global settings for TypeScript and makes sure that it works well with our IDE. Every project in our workspace then extends from those, such as like here we have the tsconfig JSON, that adds more specific settings to our application here. Now, if for some reason you need to fine tune how your React application works together with TypeScript, this would be the place where you would set it. Similarly, all components, as you have seen, are written in TSX, so with TypeScript support out of the box, as well as our Hello World, for instance, that we generated before, comes already with an interface ready that you can then use for your props to use. The next thing is testing. You might have noticed there is a Jest config already pre-configured and set up for you. As a result, we can just run npx nx test happy normal to run those Jest tests directly in our workspace. Again, these are also cached with the computation cache. So if I rerun it, the output will be immediate because it is being read out of the local cache. If you need to configure and fine tune Jest, this is where you would do it for your application. Next, there is linting. We have a local ESLintRC file here, which comes already pre-configured with a local plugin, which works best for React development. Obviously, you can fine tune this again to your own needs and add your own rules. If you happen to have multiple projects in this workspace, you can even configure it globally for the workspace at the root level ESLintRC file. Now again, to run linting, just similarly as we did with test, build, and serve, we just run nx lint happy novel, and that would run linting for our application here. Our NX workspace already came with this happy novel end-to-end -end application that we have seen initially. Now this is a fully configured Cypress setup ready to be used for your end-to-end -end test. You can see already the Cypress JSON in here. You can see already the usual setup you are accustomed to have with Cypress and a couple of support files. Again, to run this, we just run npx nx end-to-end and the application of our end-to-end -end application is happy novel end-to-end. This will now run our main app, Comfort, to be tested with Cypress, meaning it will launch behind the scenes Happy Novel in development mode. It will then launch Happy Novel end-to-end, -end, so basically Cypress, that points to our Happy Novel server and run the tests against it. Now you can see this happens here locally because I didn't specify the watch flag. So this will be a usual case that you have on CI where you don't run it in an actual browser, but rather in a headless browser. What we can obviously do is pass the watch flag. We can then just like click on the Cypress test runner, which opens up the browser window and executes the tests interactively in the browser. This is very useful for actual development, developing the tests side by side with our code. Finally, Prettier. We definitely don't want to argue over how we format our code and still it is a very important factor in a larger team to have consistency. So Prettier is pretty straightforward Basically, it is already set up in our workspace by an X. So whenever we actually change here some formatting, that wouldn't match what we would expect. And to hit save, Pretty would reformat it for us automatically. There's also a command that we can run NX format, which would run the Pretty rules comfort in our workspace for the entire files that happen to be in our workspace. So hopefully this has given you a very good overview of the main features of NX and how those could be beneficial for your React development. There's one thing I would like to mention, which is the evergreen setup NX comes with. So NX has a so-called NX migrate command, which you might not have seen in other development tools, but which allows you basically in a semi-automated fashion to transition from one version to the next. And that does not include just NX itself, but also the tools it integrates with, such as Jest, Cypress, ESLint, but also things like Storybook, which we haven't explored today. The NX team behind the scenes closely collaborates with those, te those teams, such as Cypress team or Storybook team, to make sure those integrations work well. 
And obviously, we all know how important this is, not just for the maintenance of it, but also from a security aspect to always stay up to date with the latest patches of those versions. So if you want to learn more, definitely check out the links in this video, which will show you not just how the NX Migrate command works in practice, but it will also link to a blog post that has some more th details and also common questions that come up when exploring NX in the context of React. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel such that you get notified when we publish new videos like this one. Go to our Twitter, which is NX DevTools, or subscribe to my Twitter, which is Yuri STR. See you there.